think any of these main competitor would be um, his mind. Um, you know, he would always have people on the track, but you were supposed to know what you're doing in training. And once you could overcome your fears mentally, then, you know, a competitor is just relative to what you should be able to do. Um, you know, there are guys who are competing good out there. Obviously, you have the world championship, um, gold, silver, bronze medals, all the finalists, basically. Um, I'd consider anyone around me to be a competitor, no matter how good or how inexperienced they may be. So, with me at this point in time, it's more to get over you know, that mental factor to know that my mind is my biggest competitor and once I get over that aspect then hey, everyone else would just be treated as evenly as possible. In the 400 meter hurdles you need some sort of a loose screw, you understand? You need a loose screw, it's, it's not for people who, you know, too sane. Um, in the 400 meter hurdles you need the um, the aspect of strength, speed, flexibility, you know, so it, it kind of encapsulates everything, you know, in all the events, you know, you train like an 800 meter runner as a sprinter and probably just as a gymnast in, in some sense, so it basically entails everything and that will kind of make it a lot more difficult while jumping over barriers. Greatest achievement in sport has been my breakthrough moment, you know, as a 17 year old competing with the seniors to see, you know, that I had the talent and if I didn't believe in that talent back then, then I wouldn't have been able to reach where I am today. So I'd say my breakthrough moment while I was 17 and placing fourth at the World Championships in Berlin, you know, it kind of helped to open up my eyes and, and give me that self belief. People who've been there for me since day one and they are the ones who decided to invest in my time and, and believe in the talent that I had so you know I can't really study the people who don't think that I might be able to reach where I know that I would be able to reach. Um, my team and I are really the only ones who know what I have to deal with on a daily basis so I definitely do it for them and I, apart from them my close friends and family. in the event I have a lot of experience and it's really to to use it to my advantage you know the season definitely has not started the way that I would have liked it to be but nobody's name is written on the medals as yet so that gives me just an even chance as anyone else going into Rio so I definitely go out there and give it my best shot. The food, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to the food, the nice beaches, the atmosphere, you know the great competition that's going to be taking place in Rio. I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's going to be my second Olympic Games. As I said, I'm, I'm wiser. Um, I'm, to be honest, Trinidad and Tobago is going to do well. We're going to do well. No pre-race rituals or superstitions, to be honest. Um, most people, I don't know why they believe in stuff like that, because they don't really help. <laughs> but my mom, you know, my mom and I, we, we normally pray before any of my competitions. I just sit down and chat with her the morning before, the night before, depending on the time zone difference. So she's the closest thing that would represent anything towards, you know, any routine or anything before competition. The old Lendo, he gave me this celebration. I pulled out a bow and arrow from behind my back and, and spearheaded it into the crowd after winning in 2013. But I think after this year, you know, a couple of the Trinidad and Tobago athletes will be doing the champion dance. You know, Cleary is a champion, George is a champion, Richard is a champion, Kishon and Josie Deno. Everybody is a champion this year, so we'll have a lot of champion dance to do, man.